Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> so what today is my 2023 wrapped best series. So I'm going to like hand them down and top 10 top 10 and additional five that were so close so close to making it but they didn't make it i hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's go i know i said 15 but 16 is she must be obeyed and the reason why i i, I, I left this here is because you know i just feel it's wrong you know if i make a list of the best series i watched this year and i didn't put any nigerian series inside so i think and i think she must be a bit it's the one i watched that i loved the most and it was actually very good i rated it at 8.5 the only reason why it couldn't stay here was because i had to put only mothers in the building sorry this but i had to put only mothers in the building somewhere so I had to remove it. So it's technically my 16th. And I really enjoyed the show. It's actually very interesting. And it's 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 funny. It has writing issues and pissing issues, but it's actually very funny. Like the funny scenes are extremely funny. And the message it sends is actually a very nice message. It's by Funka Kindele and it's on Amazon now. So please watch it. It's very, very interesting. Um, 15th is The Mandalorian Season 3. Yes, I know. How is The Mandalorian Season 3 so far down? But I mean, it's an 8 and 5. Most of this is an 8 and 5, so I really enjoyed it. But just that, that other interesting like series that came out this year. And the, this season was an improvement on the second season because the second season felt more like they were just setting up. Um, other series and other shows and they really didn't focus on the Mandalorian himself, Dean and Grogu. But I love the fact that this season went back to the roots and it was actually I enjoyed almost every episode apart from like that was an episode that was like iffy about but then at the end everything came together. So it's actually very nice. It's right now it's on Disney Plus. I don't know where you can find it if you are like Africa but it's you know, on Disney Plus. You can find it there. Saying is our flag means dead. Really, I think and this season I really didn't enjoy season one. Like I'm sorry, I didn't enjoy season one, but it wasn't it could have never been my top 15, top 10 and five that could have I think could have made it. But this season was actually a huge improvement to the last season and I feel that God needed um, our flag means dead to walk. After the blunder that was a love, um, Double Love and Thunder, after Love, Double and Thunder basically destroyed his career, I think he really needed this and he actually delivered. This was this was more his his style, more his um, more him. So I really enjoyed it. Everything was just put together and it was a really nice show. And I think you can watch it on HBO Max. This is going to shock. Like, I'm actually very surprised, and I know a lot of people didn't watch this. Like, it's. I was shocked that there was no like online um, banter. There was hardly anything online <clears throat> about this. But this is um, um my adventure with Superman. I really liked this because mm, I I really I, I really can't explain it. But like most animation, I really watch animation because it's just 21 minutes so I prefer it if it's compiled so I can just watch it and it go but this um, my, my adventures with Superman was so good that I just had to, I could I just watched it every single week and I love the fact that it wasn't like traditional animation it was like anime it kind of gave like an anime vibe and like the animation style was like anime-ish and I really enjoyed that and the voice work was so good even though the issue I had was that it felt like sometimes it felt like a drawing you know like 
you know when someone is drawing something and it's incomplete that's how you felt like sometimes and i think that's why it's so down on this list but it's so, exactly, it's so good and to me personally with the exception of superman and lois and i think this is the definitive superman we've had in like over 10 years and i'm including um, henry carver's man this woman was so good i like the fact that he was very powerful he was well, he was kind he had the essence of he embodied what superman is supposed to be and the only thing i complain about it is that it's like an origin story and since we can die hardly anyone that doesn't know the origin of superman it's I mean, it's been rehashed and told so many times that I think I don't think we need to tell it again. But in their defense, or like giving them points, the way they told it was very unique. It was very unique. It was more like I don't think they've told Superman story like in a very sci-fi, -y, like high-tech kind of way. And that's how they told it. My space was it actually? I can't remember where uh, if I watched on about to find it out what I guess. <laughs> Next is the Gilded Age. I know the Gilded Age is season two. Since so this season is it's still ongoing, it's like it's, uh, episode six came out like last week. Yeah, came out last week. Uh, uh, Gilded Age is, season two is so good. It's like it's so much better than season one. I like the fact that everything is it's I really don't have anything bad to say about the Gilded Age. It's just that unfortunately the ones that Next ones are so good that that's like kind of stuff. But this season was so good. If you haven't watched season one, please watch season one. It's on HBO Max. I know also Max now. It's on Max now. But uh, please watch it. It's so good. Number eleven is um, Young Love, season one. Um, Young Glove is, is an animation and it's a spin-off or sequel rather to an academy winning um, short um, movie called um, um, Hell of and it stars um, Kid Cody, um, Issa Rae, Loretta Divine, Divine. Um, in it, and it's actually very very interesting. It's it's a very it shows like you know Black American culture, but like told through like a family, very intimate um, uh, family three generations actually the daughter, the, the granddaughter, and the grandmother. And it's actually very interesting. It's it's um, it's really well put together, and I liked the, the animation style. It was. Not super real, it was 2D and not really super realistic, but it was very nice. And I love the hair textures they use. It's very hard to get like animation has very good um, African hair textures. So I like that about that. All in all, it's actually a very nice um, um, animation and it's very quick watch 21 minutes per episode, roughly. And it was very interesting. Um, and you can watch it on Max now. Um, please check it out, it's very interesting. Number 10 is Queen Charlotte. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm actually very surprised that this entered my list, and not only did it enter my list, it's my 10th best series that I watched personally this year. Mm, Queen Charlotte is a spin off of um, Bridgerton, it's kind of in the Bridgerton universe, but it's a prequel. I think it's some. Decades before um, um, the Queen, who is the present Queen right now, like decades before, it showed how she met her husband, how they got married, and you know the things that ensued, and gave us more insight into Brimsley, uh, um, her right hand man, and how she got to be, how they, you know, how she formed the good relationship she had with Lady, um, Lady. What's her name? <laughs> What's her name? Uh, the you know, the other lady, but not not Lady Bridgerton. The other the other woman. What's her name? 
But yeah, and it's actually very nice. I mean, it was, it was written by Shona Rhimes, an executive producer by Shona Rhimes, and it's actually very, very interesting. It's short, it's like a mini series, I think, for now. It's a mini series, eight episodes, about 40 something minutes to an hour. Roughly per episode, and it's it has it, I think it has everything. It has romance, it has drama, it has um, a little bit of intrigue. Right now, it's on Netflix, so you can watch on Netflix now. Number nine is One Piece. Oh, oh, One Piece. I love it. You know, <clears throat> funny thing is that I watched the. I, I don't, and I never read the anime of One Piece, but I watched the, the <coughs> excuse me, I watched the the sorry, I never read the, the manga, but I watched the anime, and I watched up to like to an anime is very long, as over a thousand episodes, so like I watched to an extent, and like I got tired, but at that but that was years ago, and when I watch the live action now and it's so, so good and according to those that have read the manga and have watched the anime it's actually very close to the source material but personally as someone that wasn't like a huge fan of one piece going into the live action i became a huge fan of it because everything was perfect the acting the production design the, the directing costumes hair makeup it was just so beautiful it was it was and uh, I don't know if the word to use, but and the fact that they followed the source materials as close as they can, that was very, that was very, very um, nice about it too. But the One Piece is so good, like I'm officially a One Piece fan. Um, oh, before I forget, the set design, especially of the Going Mary, I was shocked. Because I mean, I, I could remember the Going Mary and I, I never think, I never thought they could be able to pull it off. And they did, they really did. And you can watch One Piece right now on Netflix. In eighth place is Abbott Elementary season two. The funny thing about Abbott Elementary was that I wasn't really a big fan of it until I was like, well, no, let me just watch this season one. I mean, let me just watch this. And I did, and it was so good. It was so funny. You know, there are a lot of shows, like funny shows or comedies that come out right now. Yeah, they're not really comedies, they really make you laugh. But Abbott Elementary actually made me laugh. Like, every, I remember watching episode, I think it was episode one or episode two, something happened in that episode, and immediately that thing happened. I just turned to my sister and I told her, this just gave them an, an, an Emmy nomination. Like, that scene, the scene was so funny. Like, there is no episode you are not going to live. There's no episode you don't laugh out loud. It's very obvious that this season they had more money than more budget because. Everything was so much better. This season was so much better than last season. Please watch Abbott Elementary now. I mean, it was showing on ABC, but now it should be on Hulu, I think, or on Disney Plus, but I think it's on Hulu now. So please check out Abbott Elementary. Number seven is Superman and Lois. Superman and Lois is this why you wish you about Superman and Lois. Basically, you know, they have two kids, they, they've grown up and they get like that. And um, for it being like a superhero show, it's not really as like rampant or as popular. Like, I don't think it is as the others, but it is so good. Uh, they don't have the budget of, of a Disney Plus show, they don't have the budget of, of Netflix, they don't have the budget or even max but they make do with the budget they have and it looks so good so so good and they've renewed it for season 4 which the, unfortunately is the last season but please just check it out season 3 of um, Superman and Lois every episode was just they just ups the ante every single episode and for the fact that they don't have enough budget and they are still able to um, you know get the CGI and the VFX and everything it was perfect the only thing the only complaint I have or had with Superman and Lois was that when it was coming out, they, they would bring, bring out like two episodes and then there will be a break for like three weeks and then uh, two episodes. So like the break really, you know, messed it up for me. But now that the entire season is out, you can just quickly watch it. It's nice. And you can watch it on um, Max. You should be on Max because you can watch it on Max now and check it out. It's one of the best series of this year. Number six is 
only mothers in the building. Um, <clears throat> only mothers in the building is yeah, and it's not comedy. Like it's a comedy, uh, mystery kind of drama um, um, show. Um, um, starring um, Selena Gomez, Martin Short, and Steve Martin. You know that like they had this podcast that this is named Only Mothers in the Building, and they basically solve mothers that happen like around them. Like that, they they reside in this building, the Aconia, and every season there's been a mother in the in the building and they kind of something. And it's very very interesting. It's actually this season was season two. I, have, I, I just got season two was crap for me. Like it was not crap per se, but it wasn't as interesting as and as engaging as season one. But this season was so much better than season two. Like this season was better than season one. As one was like so the this is the of the roof. Every episode was so good. You could like at the end of each episode be like. Yo, Please have a bar. Uh, yeah. And this season had Meryl Streep. Ah, Meryl, Meryl Streep. This season had Meryl Streep, and Meryl Streep she never fails. And as um, yeah, this season had um, Paul Rudd. Who? Yeah, it was, it was okay. It's like it's like I mean, Paul Rudd can never give a bad performance. He is brought the role, and everything was perfect. The writing was even the the killer so clever. So clear that every episode, which was what I didn't feel in season two, but every episode, wherever the writers point to you as being the killer, you would think that's the killer. You would never guess who the killer was, and it made the, the, the twist, the turns, the secrets. It was just it's such a wonderful season. I really enjoyed this season the best. Number six, and you can watch it on Hulu. You can watch it on Hulu now. Number five is Castlevania Nocturne. I know. It's, I feel like this my list is very um, weird. That is very weird. But Castlevania no Nocturne. Ah, uh, Castlevania Nocturne is. Uh, I mean, I mean, should I call it a spin-off or like a sequel to Calif um, Castlevania, like the the show, and also an animation and. One of the things I love, I love about the um, Castlevania franchise is that it's the animation style is so fluid. It's so fluid and so beautiful. The way they fight, the way they move, the way they speak, and the voice action, mm, the 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 voice acting, sorry, is very very nice. But this this I actually enjoyed Nocturne way <clears throat> more than. Um, the main Castlevania, like the main um, series, and the vampires. The vampires are actually very scary and very dangerous. You know, what? I actually thought to myself, like Dracula was Dracula and Death. The spoilers: Dracula and Death were like the the big bad of Castlevania. And I just thought, how, how the hell are you going to be able to like up the ante? And they did. They really did. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Like I'm not going to give spoilers, but. The, the the villain was so good, so engaging, so evil. Yeah, the Belmont who followed this season was actually very Belmonty. <laughs> but you know, I liked that he was very different from Trevor and he had like his own struggles, his own you know things to get through. It's on Netflix now, so watch it. My fourth is Gen V. <gasps> yeah, Gen V. So good. I wasn't really a huge The Boys fan. I read the, the, I didn't finish the comics, but I still read it. And but then it was like so much, just too much for me. I just stopped. But I, you know, when The Boys you know, came out first, I really didn't really like The Boys. I didn't even like watch like that. That much. I like basically fast forward the things I watched. But I, re, I did a rewatch recently. <laughs> And it's it's the boy is actually very good. It was so much better than I than I than I thought it was. And Gen V was so perfect. I I really enjoyed Gen V way more than the boys season three, and I I loved the boys season three. But Gen V was just so perfect. And that ending, that ending, oh, I can't wait. 
but the boy is season four for that ending because of that ending the viewers are like oh it's basically um it's a, sp a spin-off show about the a group of um you know soups in a soup university that they know now that they weren't like born or came from heaven that basically human you know that they were basically babies that were experiment experimented with um, compound v so uh you know there are lots of you know, conspiracies and vaults being vaults every episode was better than the last episode really. like they never failed uh maybe it's on amazon prime now you can watch it on amazon prime My third position is Ted Lasso. Ah, Ted Lasso. <laughs> when season one came out, like when it came out like three or four years ago, I really didn't watch season one. Still date, I haven't watched season one. I started from season two and it was so good. It was so good. I became a huge Ted Lasso fan. Season two wasn't it wasn't like as good as season one. But I didn't watch season one. But everybody says season two wasn't as good as season one. But season two wasn't, it wasn't like exceedingly good, but it was very good to me. I like because I didn't watch season one, and season three was so much better than season two. Like every episode was so wonderful. And what I love about it last week is that the 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 hope it gives. Like you don't have to be a douchebag. You don't have to be a bad person. You, like being good is good. Like being good, but for just being good is actually. It's not a bad thing. It's not. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of immeasurable strength. And that's what I like about Ted Lasso. Uh, Ted Lasso, I feel this is perfect. And I was actually very sad when it ended. It was really sad when it ended. I, 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 I was always looking forward to the next episode because I really love Ted Lasso. And you can watch Ted Lasso now on Apple TV. Yeah. Don't check on Apple TV. No. Whatever Apple, you know, Apple streaming service. I don't know if it's Apple TV, but Apple streaming service. Number two is Loki. Ah, uh, Loki. Oh God, I love Loki so much. Loki is, you know, season two is apart from Wonder Vision, the best Marvel series ever. The best in Phase Four. The second best. Second best. Second best. The best in Phase Four. The best in um, Phase Five. Probably the best in Phase Six. Loki was so good. Every episode was just perfect. And you know why? Why I even loved it the most is because um, um, they had a different headwriter for season one and season two, and the fact that they were able to like tie everything together it was so wonderful. Look, is the only um, um, MCU movie or series or whatever that has been able to tap into the multiverse and delivered. Look, it was just. Perfect, and with this multiverse craze that's actually getting boring and you know coming to an end, it was nice. Um, um, seeing uh, you know, Loki, Loki was just perfect. Everybody gave a performance the, the 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 acting, the production design, the costumes, the sets, the VFX, the CGI, everything was just so perfect. I think the only issue I had with it is because is that they really didn't show. How much powerful Loki is. I mean, now we see, you know, I don't want to give spoilers, but now we can see how extremely powerful it is. But I don't think it's really showed, like, in episode, like episode one to like four, but episode five, from episode four. Perfect! So good! So good. So good. Oh, yeah, um, Loki is on Disney Plus now. We can watch it on Disney Plus. So The best series of the year is Asuka. Ah, Asuka is Asuka is perfect. Asuka is perfect. Asuka was made for me. It was like it was as if Dave, um, Dave Filoni made it just personally for me. Asuka was perfect. And I'm a, I'm a huge Star Wars Rebels fan. Like I've watched Star Wars Rebels like ten times now. Like from season one to season four, I've watched it over ten times now. That's how much I love it so much. And it was perfect. So like you could do. I was basically Star Wars Rebels season five, 
and you know like sprinkled with um hummus is with here and there. But Asuka was perfect. There is, there is absolutely no flaw in Asuka from episode one to episode six. No flaw. Perfect. Ten over ten. Like there was nothing wrong. The pacing was right. The acting was good. Production design was good, costumes good, sets good, VFX good, mic good, even the, the extras good. Everything is perfect. Rosario Dawson is a goddess. Perfect as Ahsoka. Um, Ahsoka is on Disney Plus now. You can watch it. This is my 2023 wrapped series, my top 10, mixed with my, you know, five more that could make it top 10, and one more that could make it top 15. Uh, but this is my list. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be doing the worst list soon. 2023, I'll be doing the worst list soon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the series. If you enjoyed it, like. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe if you're my friend to support. Subscribe if you're my enemy to hate. Just subscribe. And I hope you guys have a nice day, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.